Okay, looking at um, the culmination of all of our series stuff that we've done so far, and that is dealing with Taylor and McLaurin polynomial approximations. Left out the word polynomial, see how I slickly stuck it in there? All right, uh, what a Taylor series is is a way to generate a polynomial approximation for a function. Uh, and you can get as high degree as you want, and you'll see what I mean by that later. Um, and then once you generate the polynomial, sometimes we can actually write it as a power series. So uh, a Taylor series approximation or Taylor polynomial approximation is like a power series or it is a power series. Um, and this is the formula we're going to use to generate our Taylor approximations, with this being the important thing for you, that you need to remember. Um, and we always start with n equaling 0. So we start at n equals 0. So here's our formula, uh, and we simply do the nth derivative. By the way, that is the nth derivative. It's not an exponent. Um, it's in parentheses, which means the nth derivative of c over n factorial times x minus c to the n power. And c is just some point that will be given to you. It's going to be the center of the Taylor polynomial, like the center of a power series. So uh, let's try an example of one of these, and we're going to use this formula. Uh, and the, really the key part for this formula that's tougher to read or tougher to remember, is this. This is how you find the coefficients of your series. This is how you find the coefficients of the series, of the series, or polynomial. I'll stick with polynomial for now. We'll get into series later. All right, um, so let's look at an example where I want the third degree Taylor polynomial for y equals ln x. And uh, I prefer to have f of x. I may just scratch out that y and say f of x, if that's OK with y'all. Um, f of x equals ln of x. Um, and I'm going to need to use that formula, which was the nth derivative at c, which in this case my c is 1, over n factorial times x minus c, which is 1, to the n power. I'm going to need to do that. And if I want the third degree, that means I need to go up until n is equal to 3, so I would have a third degree term. Remember, third degree means the highest exponent must be 3. Uh, and I like to use a table. So um, I need n. I'm going to start at 0, then I'm going to go up to 3, 1, 2, 3. Uh, and then I need to find the nth derivative. So the nth derivative of my function. And then I need to evaluate my nth derivative at 1. Uh, now, assuming that y'all are good at derivatives, I'm going to knock out these derivatives really quick. I know that my function is ln x, so my 0th derivative is ln x, uh, and then the derivatives are this. There we go. Uh, and then I will plug in 1 to each of those. I want to know what the nth derivative at 1 is, because that's needed in the formula. So that would be ln of 1 is 0, uh, and then 1 over 1 is 1. Negative 1 over 1 squared is negative 1. 2 over 1 cubed is going to be 2. So these are the coefficients, or almost. This is um, the nth derivative at 1, and then that's going to be the numerator in this. So my series approximation, or my Taylor polynomial approximation, is going to be uh, 0 over 0 factorial, because that's when n was equal to 0, times x minus 1 to the 0, plus, and then 1, over 1 factorial times x minus 1 to the first plus, and then my next one was negative 1, negative 1 over, and that was when n was 2, so 2 factorial x minus 1 squared plus, and then at 3, whoops, my nth derivative at 3 was 2 over 3 factorial times x minus 1 all to the third, uh, and that would be your Taylor polynomial approximation. If you wanted to clean that up, uh, all of this is just 0. 0 factorial is 1. 0 divided by 1 times all that mess, that goes away. And we're simply left with x minus 1 plus negative 1 over, I'm going to leave it as factorials, x minus 1 squared plus 2 over 3 factorial times x minus 1 cubed. Uh, and that would be your Taylor, your third degree Taylor approximation for the ln of x. Uh, then we could now use this function to estimate the values of ln x uh, close to 1. You don't want to get too far away from the center. Um, but if I wanted to know what the ln of 
point non was, well, point non is pretty close to one. I could plug in point non to this polynomial, and that would give me a pretty good approximation for the ln of point non. And I imagine, uh, having done no research on this, I imagine that's how poly, uh, Taylor polynomials were used uh, back in the day before calculators. Um, they could generate the Taylor series, uh, and then you could now use arithmetic to evaluate a natural log of something. Uh, now that's purely speculation. Somebody from the Math League of America may come beating down my door tonight um, if that happens to be wrong, but that's my guess. Uh, moving on to Maclaurin polynomials. A Maclaurin polynomial is simply a Taylor polynomial centered at zero. Um, it's kind of like the uh, mean value theorem and Rolle's theorem, if you remember those two, where Rolle's theorem was just a very specific case of mean value theorem. Uh, a Maclaurin polynomial is a very specific Taylor polynomial. Um, and then a Taylor and Maclaurin series, uh, that is when you can represent your polynomial in, in, if you recognize any patterns, and you could represent it as a series. Uh, and this is the general formula for the series. Notice it's the same thing I gave you earlier, only now it's written in sigma notation as a series. So this is your Taylor series for a function centered at C, and you need to know this. This is very, very important stuff. We're going to use it a lot. Um, so let's do a couple of series problems. <clears throat> Find the Taylor series for f of x equals e to the x centered at 0. Um, now if it says a Taylor series centered at 0, you could also call that a Maclaurin series. Um, so I could have said find the Maclaurin series for e to the x, which is the same thing as this. Um, well, if I want to find that, what I've got to do is go through that list of derivatives and try to find a pattern um, and so I'm going to make a little table. And notice I didn't say like a third degree or fourth degree. I've got to go all the way down until I see a pattern in my coefficients. So let me um, get my derivatives going. And then I'll unpause the video and you'll magically see part of the table. There, see, told you. Here it is very quickly. Um, now, e to the x is very nice because you can do derivatives all day long and it's just e to the x. Uh, and then for my the rest of my table, uh, the first table I did, I only did the nth derivative at 0. I'm going to go ahead and put it over in factorial because that is the formula we use. It's the nth derivative at your center point, which in this case is 0, over n factorial times x minus n, or x minus 0 to the n power, uh, which I could even go ahead and, and write that in sigma notation, filling in what I see here. Um, but let's go ahead and fill out this, this side of the table, and this is kind of nice because e to the 0, the nth derivative at 0, is going to be 1 for all of these. So it's going to be 1 over whatever n is factorial. 1 over 1 factorial. 1 over 2 factorial. 1 over 3 factorial. And you really only need to go long enough till you see a pattern. If you don't see the pattern here, then uh, we have bigger issues. I hope you see the pattern. Uh, the numerator is always 1, the denominator is always whatever n is factorial. So when I plug it into this formula, um, it's going to end up being, e to the x is going to end up being approximately, because this is a Taylor approximation, um, it's 1 over 0 factorial times x minus 0 to the 0 plus 1 over 1 factorial times x minus 0 to the 1 plus 1 over 2 factorial times x minus 0 to the tooth, and then it continues, and hopefully you can see the pattern that this is, it's 1 over n factorial times x minus 0, which is just x, to the n power. Uh, and that's what we have here for our Taylor series, and so I can say that e to the x is approximately the series as n starts at 0 and goes to infinity, of 1 over n factorial times x to the n, uh, which I'm going to rewrite because I like having x to the n over n factorial, as n goes from 0 to infinity. So that is our Taylor series for e to the x, um, and I'm going to bypass the, um, the proof of this, but it actually turns out that this thing is always equal to e to the x. Um, 
this the radius of convergence if we went through and did the ratio test the radius of convergence for this series is uh, negative infinity to infinity so it actually works for all values of x which is kind of nice um, and this is one that you might want to put in your little back pocket as a memorization thing there are several series that we will memorize and your Maclaurin series for e to the x is one of them it shows up rather frequently uh, and you need to memorize that memorize because if you don't memorize it then you're going to have to go through the hassle of generating it and that's just too much work all right let's try one more one more i find the radius and inter interval of convergence for the mclaurin series for sine x um, okay well we're going to go back and do the exact same thing we just did i'm going to set up a table if i'm going to do a mclaurin series i need to know several derivatives and I need to know the value of uh, those derivatives. And if it's at, if it's a Maclaurin series, it is around x equals 0. So we're going to be doing the nth derivative at 0 over n factorial times x minus 0 to the n. Uh, but we're pretty smart. I assume you know your 0 or minus 0 tables. So it's going to be times x to the n power. And that's what I've got to figure out with my table. So I'll plot. I'll use several values of n, however many I need, in order to see the pattern, the nth derivative at, of x and the nth derivative at 0 divided by n factorial. So let me fill this in real quick. All right, there we go. So here's our table. Um, you have all the derivatives, and the derivative of sine cycles through. You go sine, cosine, and the derivative of that is negative sine, negative cosine, and then it starts over at sine. Um, and then sine and cosine at 0 are um, 0 and 1. So we're going to go from 0 to 1 to 0, and cosine of 1, or 0 is 1, but that one's negative. And this one is going to do a little bit of some interesting stuff. Um, starting to write out my series, sine x is going to be approximately, um, let's see, 0 over 0. So that's going to be 0. And it really doesn't matter what the rest of it is. It would be 0 over 0 factorial. Um, times x to the 0. Actually, I may just go ahead and write that. 0 over 0 factorial x to the 0 plus 1 over 1 factorial times x to the 1 plus 0 over 2 factorial x to the 2 plus, and then it's negative 1 over 3 factorial times x cubed. Um, and I'm simply following this little formula plus 0 over 4 factorial x to the 4th plus 1 over 5 factorial x to the 5th plus dot 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 and it keeps going and we look for some patterns and this one's kind of nice because every other term is 0 it goes away that's going to leave me with sine x being um, x to the 1st over 1 factorial minus 1 times x cubed over 3 factorial, uh, then that one goes away plus 1 over 5 factorial times x to the 5th, so x to the 5th over 5 factorial. And we can start to see the pattern. Hopefully, we're going up by the odd numbers, and this is an alternating sequence. So my next one is going to be x to the 7th over 7 factorial. My next one's going to be x to the 9th over 9 factorial. And now we're challenged with trying to find the pattern for that. Uh, so this is going to be the series as n starts at 0 and goes to infinity. And if we're going up by 2's, this is x to the 2n plus 1. Uh, when I plug in 1 for n, 2 times 1 is 3, which gives me my next one. 2, 2 times 2 plus 1 is 5. I say 2 times 1 is 3. I don't know what I said. Uh, if I plug in 3, 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. And that's going to give me every odd number divided by 2n plus 1 factorial uh, and then it's an alternating sequence so I've got to take care of that alternating aspect so negative 1 to the let's well, see my first term is positive if I just start at n negative 1 to the 0 would be positive 1 negative 1 to the first which would actually be my second term would be negative 1 and so this is your series your Maclaurin series for sine x and I don't know why I'm drawing a box around this uh, other than you need to know that, so I'll put a box around that because that is one you need to memorize. 
but I'm not done because I said find the radius and interval of convergence. So now that I have the series, we need to go through and find um, the interval and radius of convergence. All right, so here we are. Now that we have the series, we'll set up the ratio test. So we'll do the limit as n approaches infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 times x to the, if I plug in n plus 1, 2 times n plus 1 plus 1, that's 2n plus 2 plus 1, that's 2n plus 3, right? All right so x to the 2n plus 3 over 2n plus 3 factorial times, and then the reciprocal would be 2n plus 1 factorial over negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n plus 1, and we're doing the absolute value of that. And now we need to start cleaning up. Uh, let's see. Let me cancel my x's. I have 2n plus 1 and 2n plus 3 up here. <clears throat> there are two more on top than there are on bottom. So I'm going to cancel these. And that's going to leave me with an x squared on top. <clears throat> let's see. Uh, my negative 1 to the n, there's one more negative 1 on top than there is on bottom. So I'm left with this negative 1. Uh, of course, we're doing the absolute value, so that negative 1 is going to go away also. Uh, and then 2n plus 1 factorial and 2n plus 3. Uh, this one is going to cancel. 2n plus 3 factorial is the same thing as 2n plus 3 times 2n plus 2, which is the number just before, right? We subtract 1, times 2n plus 1 factorial. So I rewrite 2n plus 3 factorial as all that, and then the 2n plus 1 factorials cancel. Leave me with... Uh, the absolute value of negative 1 times x squared, which is just going to be x squared, over 2n plus 3, 2n plus 2. Uh, and in this case, uh, remember, this is a limit as n approaches infinity. My bottom degree is bigger than the top. There are zero n's in the numerator. My bottom degree is 2. So this limit is equal to 0. And in the ratio test, something converges when the ratio, the the limit of that ratio is less than 1. 0 is less than 1 always, which means this thing is always convergent. So uh, my radius of convergence is infinity, and the interval is negative infinity to positive infinity. And that means that the Maclaurin series for sine x is also equal to sine x. Um, if you carried it out an infinite number of terms, the interval of convergence covers everything. So I can use this Maclaurin series that we generated right here. I can use that to approximate values of sine at weird angles that we don't know. Uh, and again, I think that's how this was used back in the day, among other things. But there we go. So there's an introduction to Maclaurin and Taylor series. Um, 18 minutes, wow, that's really not bad for something like this.